I fucking hate the world. Don't you? I know some of you, because of technology, at this very moment of recording, are seeing me right through this camera. That's a scary existence that we live in now. I can't wait for you to see it in person. You know, it just just the uh, we're at about fifty five percent finished. Let's shine some more light on this. It moves right in front of you, doesn't it? What does it take to be a master? I'd like to tell you, but I'm still trying to figure that out myself. book that I'm holding in my hand, you know, since we're going to do, I'm going to do an art talk, is uh, To Lose the Track. And I, I can tell, I can see the flourishes and the little strokes. And the, um, the full body color. And how a woman's dress flowers at the end. Just like in certain aspects of, of that back there. And it's taking on... Um, more and more of a three-dimensional quality. So what's, uh, what's Toulouse the Track's uh, story? You know, born in 1864 and died in 1901. Henri Marie Raymond de Toulouse de Trac Montfort, à naissance en novembre uh, 24, uh, 1864, uh, yes. Dans le hôtel de Bosque, le. Uh, What the Rochet's family uh, at a bite. He the descend uh, Le Comte de Toulouse and Le Vicant à la Troc, the me avec uh, unbroken ancestry, traceable à la Tante de Charlemagne. 
é... Il perd euh, le camp Alphonse, et il meurt à Del Tapier de Sévérin. Euh, leur cousin euh, premier. Le Suleiman, autre euh, enfant euh, de votre mariage, euh, Hen Uh, Henry, uh, younger uh, frère Richard, uh, mort on the eve de his uh, premier uh, fête. Henry, il uh, sent uh, nis. He was not strong. Il n'y a fort pas. Dans his uh, naissance. I can't I can't translate all of this just yet. Throughout his childhood, he grew abnormally slowly. And even before the accidents which left him per permanently crippled, he walked with the aid of his stick. The first of these often chronicled accidents occurred on May 30th, 1879, when he tripped in rising from a low chair and fractured his left thigh. 15 months later, So, uh, 15 mois après, il y ils sont uh, convalescing uh, when he fell, il tombe uh, fell during a walk at uh, fracture the ultra leg thigh is his thigh again my vocabulary is is far from complete and it'll take me the rest of my life to really understand from the trivial occasions of these fractures and other other evidence, it seems that they were the result of a bone disease. For three generations, uh, the Toulouse the tracks had drawn as they had ridden and hunted on every possible occasion. Thus, when Henry showed a pr precarious artistic talent, it was accepted without surprise. When before he was 15, he realized he was permanently crippled and would, to a certain extent, be precluded from the normal pursuits of the French aristocracy. He set out to become a professional artist, being temperamentally unable to lead a life of mediocrity and idleness. He had his first lessons from a minor am animal painter, uh, Prince To, Prince Toe? who advised his parents to allow him to enter the studio of the successful academic painter, Léon Bonin. Il entre à Bonin studio en 1882. Car, uh, dans un an, Bonin, uh, Donné, he gave up uh, teaching, and let's try to move to the studio of another famous academic painter, Cormont. There he worked industriously for a time, encouraged by Cormont's approval of his work. 
Eventually, uh, however, he grew restless and discontented with his academic studies. At the time of Latrac, at the time Latrac began his artistic education, an ex-artist, Rudolf de Sally, had recently opened Le Chat Noir, the first of the haunts in which established Montmartre as a center of Parisian nightlife. Latrac began regularly to frequent and sketch in the dance halls, cabarets, and bars of Mont Montmartre, where he eventually settled. His first publicly exhibited works were hung on the walls of the Miraton. Miraton. Uh, the cabaret opened in, in 1885 on the Boulevard Rochard. Uh, by the chasseur uh, Arista Bruno. Uh, by the top, he, uh, he was uh, Vant Cat. Uh, the truck had developed a personal style. Uh, the truck had uh, developed, uh, <laughs> uh, developed uh, a style personnel. That's the, that's the grammar. The pistache style adapted from Degas and Florent, for which two years earlier he had decorated the walls of the Auberge Asselin uh, in uh, Villieu sur Morin. Matured in the brilliant paintings of the Cirque Fernando, his work was becoming known in. Uh, I'm not, oh, this 1888. He was invited to submit works to the annual exhibition in Brussels of the XX group, so uh, 2020 group, which was among the more vital of avant garde uh, groups, or 1010 XX. I'm, I'm messing up here, it doesn't matter. Figure it out. You got, you got the whole internet in front of you. Which is among the more vital avant-garde groups. His drawings appear to be the illustrated periodicals Courrier Francais, Paris et Lustre, Figario et Lustre, and Rio. On Near which Catherine Ons uh, a wider recognition with his first poster. Poster art had become popular, almost a cult, during the previous decades, and when Latrac accepted a commission to design a poster. For the autumn season of the of the Moulin Rouge, he was contemplating with the most famous poster artist of the day, Jules Charest. His poster was an immediate success, and his designs of the dancer, La Gouri, uh, kicking up her skirt behind the angular top hatted silhouette of her partner, Valentin de de Sol de, de Sauce had remained a popular image of the gay 90s, so the happy 90s. Not the kind of gay you're thinking about right now. In the next five years, Latrac designed 31 posters and nearly 400 lithographs. In 1892, he accepted a commission to decorate the salon of a licensed brothel in the Rue d'Ambroise. So, Ambroise is a flower. While working there, he became familiar, excuse me, became familiar, familiar with the girls and began the long series of portraits for which he is most famous. When two years later, the most extravagantly luxurious of Parisian brothels opens, uh, in the Rue de Moulin, 
The track set up his studio there and freely announced it as his current address. By 1898, his health was visibly declining. He was an alcoholic and suffered from venereal disease. In February of the following year, after an attack brought on by a bout of drinking, he was confined to the Chateau de Saint James, a sanatorium and asylum at New Ili. The Chateau de Saint James, a sanatorium and asylum at New Ili. New Ili. That's, I think that's, that's pretty close. Uh, during his confinement and to demonstrate that he had regained his health, he produced from memory a remarkable and haunting series of circus scenes. But though he was released after four months, he never fully recovered his health. Within six months, he had began to drink again. During spasmodic periods of work, he painted a handful of brilliant pictures, but his skill became erratic. The end came in 1901. On July 15th, after putting his canvases in order and signing those he approved of, he locked his studio door for the last time. He was resting at the seaside at, at Fasson, when one night in August he collapsed with an attack of paralysis. He died at his mother's home at Maron on September 9th at the age of 37. Yesterday was my mother's birthday. The more one sees of him, the taller he grows. Jules Renard. Nice, the Battle of the Flowers. The cross hatching and everything. Oh, he fills in. He fills in the scene with brush, with uh, pen strokes and brush strokes, and giving dimension and quality to the shadows. And now he puts in flourishes with the with the highlights. If you're watching this and you have it open in a window, I, I encourage you to open to loose in, a, in another uh, in another window. But there's this is scumbling. It looks like uh, a certain degree of dry brushing and very similar to Van Gogh, you know, with the, the again, the Toulouse is in this, he's in, he's in this painting right now, you know, and I'll show this to you and not, not, not as confirmation bias, but nonetheless, there he is. There's only so many ways that you can paint. And you can't paint without knowing how to draw. That's that's the one of the first lessons I learned from my art teachers in high school. This is a very good painting, but I you know of course I'm drawn to redheads very much so. Uh, it, it the painting is entitled The Girl with the Red Hair, 1889. But you know, I love I love women in general, so whomever I end up with. And I have a hard time believe, believing at this point in my life that I'll ever end up with a woman. Um, 
um, because I've just been alone for so long. You become hardened to the love of other people. And if you have any thoughts about this, let's be clear about this. I am not interested in men. Thank you. Uh, Jaina of Real Dancing at the Moulin Rouge. The, the, color, the color choices on a raw canvas is what's really striking about this. You know, and I'm looking at these, these images like, like, a, like a child, you know, the first time all over again. And oh, I'm getting a child versus my toe here. And there's a, and, you know, they can see where Picasso was inspired at, at some points with the, um, with how well Toulouse uh, does faces. And she looks like she's doing the, doing the can-can. Just like this. Gina of Real was one of the track's most fascinating subjects. She was thin, refined, and intelligent. The only Montemarte dancer perceptive enough to appreciate Latrac's paintings. As the illegitimate daughter of a courtesan and an Italian nobleman, she had a difficult childhood. Determined to leave home to pursue a dancing career, though she had no formal training, she relied on her natural grace and rhythm to carry her through. Avril began to appear began appearing at the Moulin Rouge when it opened. In dancing a variation of the can can with La Goule, uh, through, through she though she preferred dancing alone. Her subsequent fame was due largely, due largely due to Latrac's pictures of her. He gave her many of his sketches in which she appeared in poses ranging from the most sensitive characterizations to the boldest caricatures. This picture combines both qualities. Oil paint is used here like pastels with immediate and immediate and movement immediacy and movement appropriate to the subject the self-absorbed avril dances for her own pleasure the colors are limited to white of her dress contrasting with the dark blue and mauve of her petticoats stocking and hat backgrounds and floor are merely suggested except for two spectators at the rear absorbed in each other Emphasizing Avril's isolation. At the Moulin Rouge, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's de and again, like I said before, there's there's commonality between Toulouse and. Uh, And Van Gogh, and the ghastly quality and the, the lighting of some of this. Let's see if I just here. This is a big fold out here. You see the woman's face, yeah. Phantasmagorgie, spooky. And the woman, the woman's, the women are not very happy. The one woman in the background looks very drunk, uh, occluded uh, by the man with the beard. He's clutching something as if he's making a negotiation. There's just noise in the background. To be to be one of the best in the world at what you do requires a serious amount of patience. 
and at this moment, say, okay, August 11th, 2023, uh, patience is, is a dying, nearly extinct quality of humanity. At least in, in the age of information, this post-internet epoch, Yvette Gilbert taking a curtain call. She's an old, older woman. You know, you can see, you can see, you know, where the, where the where the Joker, say, you know, Heath Ledger, uh, takes a bit of inspiration from from these, you know, classical works. And I'll show this to you now, and you'll see what I mean because this is a This is a distortion of her, right? That's what it says. And how... Um, how some of us don't know when to give up and to move on from the spotlight. For fear of being forgotten, you know, better to burn out than fade away in some respects. Look at this. The female clown, Sha U Kao. I'm gonna let it look after the dog here for a second. Don't go anywhere. So much of art is depressing. You consider that Toulouse's life was so cut short. And you know, you, you can really see the ugly parts of women in his in his work. Just like uh, Degas, you know, ratty little little creatures how ugly some of them look in this picture and uh, this is as you know where Francis Bacon gets some of his inspiration no doubt with some of these these brush strokes and the transparencies. Buggery in the barn. Yeah, I used to like bacon until you look I looked in more into him. And uh, bacon's story is in seriously, seriously ugly. Because it used to be cool, you know, uh, you just look at the, the Pope, the Benedict, and obviously he's on, on the, 
He's on a throne. He's screaming. And there's preoccupation with mouths, hands, and eyes. Thirty-seven. And now we remember him forever. How many people now, because of the age that we live in, will go their entire lives ignored because of whatever reason? It's depressing to think about, but We die three times. I set out on this journey as a child. And the worst of humanity almost got to me, tortured by other people, torturing myself. But life is worth living. And some things money can't buy. Thanks for watching this art talk. I hope you learned something from it as I have from Henry here. If we don't learn from history, we're all doomed to repeat it. I'm just glad I don't have venereal disease or alcoholism or a bone disease. Take care of yourself.